So former Home Secretary of England, Jack Straw, once quoted that these victims are not seen as a human being by the perpetrators. They, they consider them as an easy meat. And slowly they, they gain the trust of a child. So the, the difference here between a child and an adult is when you gain the trust of a child, it is easy to extract everything out of it. An adult may object. But here the child is 11 to 16 years. We can understand what will be the maturity psychologically, how mature a child is to see the bigger picture. I'll say up to 2009, there were hardly 30 convictions because authorities were not even ready to acknowledge this. Grooming gang scandal in Britain. So this is very sensitive in nature. Um, some of the things will hurt you when you hear that. It uh, makes you feel sad and uh, pains you. But we must acknowledge truth. We can't run away from it. And for that sake, we must know what are the things going on in our world. And this grooming gang phenomena has a parallel in Indian society too, which we call love jihad. There are differences how both things operate, but uh, uh, it would be you know good uh, uh, good thing to know about this what has happened in Britain in last uh, 25, 30 years uh, period of time. So I'll start with this quote: Our life lives be begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. So this was a very famous quote by Martin Luther King. So uh, I'll put that in the context in a while. So, so the first thing, uh, this is a photo of Charlene Downs. Uh, so she was a girl from Blackpool. This is a town in Britain and she is missing since uh, November 2003. And when she uh, was last seen she was uh, 14 years of age and this was her latest uh, photo of that time so after her disappearance her mother and family have gone through a very painful traumatic uh, period where they try to reach out to the authorities police and child protection agencies everyone from pillar to post, they, they went and tried to search their daughter and her whereabouts, but they were unsuccessful. Her mother came up with a book where she has given a detailed account of how the story went, what happened like on the day and after that. So 2003 and now we are sitting in 2022, so the last 19 years she has waited for her daughter to return back. It was a desperate search of her mother. There was no body found, no conviction, no answers. The most uh, unfortunate thing a mother has to endure. Then uh, later on, this trial progressed. So initially after her disappearance, the very next day they tried to reach out to police and uh, they came into action but there was no clear trace and later on some award was uh, put on that whoever gives information about Charlie, Charlene, uh, will be awarded some, you know, big sum of money they have put. And after uh, uh, so much research and search and investigation, they identified two suspects. So the first one was a, a, a guy from Jordan, Iyad Abatikari. It's a very uh, unusual name for us. And then second guy was Iranian, uh, Mohammad Raveshi. So they were the owner of a local takeaway take uh, venture, Funny Boys. And uh, after having a suspicion, police uh, uh, put a secret audio recorder in their house. And uh, they went to two years of recordings. There were 54 uh, final, final set of recordings that have come in the court. And there was a transcription done and this came to. So they 
over those recordings they acknowledged killing charlene uh in a very cold blooded manner and this incident i brought up because it was like very you know painful to hear what happened so they they acknowledged that they have murdered charlin chopped up her body minced and fed to unsuspecting customers in kebabs so they were having this kebab takeaway joint how someone can do this a 14 year girl they killed minced and sold her in kebabs and about her bones they said that it were these were ground down into tile grouting the whole jury and everybody was in utter shock that how can a human being do something with anyone's daughter like this the agony her mother and her her parent her uh, father and her siblings have endured was unimaginable but even after this the system the justice system was so pathetic because they found the the, the defendants they raised concern about the accuracy of that transcription and the co- and the quality of that and court has like was un- indecisive and both these men were set free they were not given any punishment so that was the irony of you know this uh, this episode and uh, during the trial uh, her mother came to know that uh, charlin was brutally abused last two years before her disappearance and she was uh, uh, between two groups two gangs she was you know sometimes in the pakistani muslim grooming gangs and sometimes these takeaway owners and they were in fight and they were fight broke up between these two gangs and out of that anger these two people killed her but before that two years aggressively they have abused her and this is one off incident in this grooming nightmare so this is a start i just wanted to give a feel of feel of how girls the innocent school girls have what pain they have gone through and how whole system have failed them so we'll we'll try to understand the de- details of this phenomena and how it works and what are the various reasons that the conviction rate is so low so this will be the agenda of today's discussion so what exactly we mean by grooming and then we'll try to understand the scope of this problem how many girls how many families it has impacted who are these people which we call perpetrators then what is the business angle behind grooming gang and who failed this innocent school going girls we'll talk about multiculturalism narrative of racism and in the in the end i'll take you through some case studies and see uh, what we can do to avoid such uh, such things happening with our daughters so in, if i go with the definition part of it so grooming what is it so it is a organized sexual exploitation of children and here we'll talk about underage girls school going girls they are sexually exploited by ruthless but very well organized criminal gangs so former home secretary of england jack straw once quoted that these victims are not seen as a human being by the perpetrators they they consider them as an easy meat and that is very evident from the example of charlin we have seen in last few slides how they have you know disposed of her body they were running a kebab shop and that's the uh, you know convenient method they uh, did to dispose of so uh, 
So a further extension to the grooming. So it is uh, basically a psychological condition, conditioning of a of a uh, vulnerable child. So how it goes is ensnaring. So identify a girl, create dependency, take the full control, and then finally the total dominance. I'll try to you know explain these things in easy words. So from the victim side, it is identified by the perpetrator, groomed, abused, and sold into sex slavery, prostitution. And perpetrators, they come as a boyfriend, very charming boyfriend. Then they develop that relationship, go into physical mode. Then they agree these young girls to have physical relationship with their relatives and other friends. And then finally, it turns into sex slavery. I'll not stop at prostitution because of the detailed study of this grooming gang phenomena, it separated it out from prostitution. Prostitution is a very different thing than what grooming does. It is more equivalent to sex slavery. It is, it, so basically, it is a systematic manipulation of the mind. Um, so the modus operandi, how it goes is the mostly the school going girls are the targets. They are the soft target. And as low as 10, 11 years old girl, as soon as they are into high schools, they are the target and up to 16 years. So they will be contacted by a mid-teen or late teens boys attractive boys with flashy cars. They will give lots of gifts. It's called love bomb bombing phenomena, where there is a lot of flattery, passing compliments, gifts, giving car rides, going to takeaway and uh, this uh, restaurants. And slowly they, they gain the trust of a child. So the, the difference here between a child and an adult is when you gain the trust of a child, it is easy to extract everything out of it. An adult may object. But here the child is 11 to 16 years. We can understand what will be the maturity psychologically, how mature a child is to see the bigger picture, see the evil design behind it. And that is what they used for their advantage. Once the intimate relationship starts, many a times it has been seen that kid is put into drinks, spike drinks, pictures and videos are taken, and then finally they are uh, made to agree to continue this with other customers, other clients. So drugs and prostitution. So starting with a normal girlfriend, boyfriend relationship, it ends in a, such a horrible state. This I have pretty much explained in the last slide. So girl will be, you know, that, that teenage, uh, the age itself is so, you know, some uh, uh, charm of the so doing something extra, doing something adventurous. So when the girls are introduced to the world of adults, where the drinking, the drugs, all that, and the freedom. So that is what attracts these girls. And then the next step they try to do is create wedge between girl and her parents. So this is, I'll, I'll explain later on, the agencies, the police, and a lot of other people have failed girls miserably. The only link which was preventing girls from getting abused is their parents and they will try to create a wedge between girl and her parents. The relationship will be in full turmoil and once that happens they have achieved their aim because that girl has no one to speak to. Every full dependency, the complete dominance is what they create. So it is a downward spiral of rape, prostitution, mental and physical suffering once uh, it goes in that mode. As I said, like if a girl dare to speak up 
and then she is intimidated threats are passed on not only to her her family a brutal violence there is no limit to the violence these girls go through and that is up to a certain extent very shocking and the pregnancies back street abortions murders and disappearances all these are not very uncommon here girls have these small childs child have faced so much physical violence in this grooming phenomena that this is very painful so the the kids if we look at the minimum age of these grooming gang victims 10 to 11 years age it starts from so early this is the age where parents are reluctant to talk about these things with their daughters but on the other hand the predators are eyeing those daughters who are totally innocent at that age the average age of victims in over the period of 30 years is starting from the late 80s to till date if we average out it is coming 13 to 14 years so we can now understand how young these girls are the the average age of uh, predators the perpetrators is 28 years of age so there is a huge difference between the age here uh, of the victim and the perpetrator so when i said that this is more of a psychological mental conditioning taking a, a full control of a girl so uh, there's a there's a lady called jane senior she has worked on this grooming um, uh, issue for multiple years there was a project run by bernardo's charity this project name was risky business so around 2000 to 2013 so for close to 13 14 years of time she has worked on this phenomena and she has produced a very beautiful book from that book we get a lot of accounts like how it happens so she she met a, a, a she has dealt with lots of girls one of the girls elison 14 years of age and she was abused by a pakistani man who was in his late 30s so the difference 14 and 30s so when she talked with her she was kind of a, you know he takes care of me he takes me in sports car very fancy car my friends are jealous of me he takes me out for dinner then slowly jane took her to the bad part of it she says what about he asking you uh, to go with his friends the girl was in a condition she could most of these girls who are the victims they never realize that they are groomed they are so early in their age that they think that this is a norm so she they don't ex- accept that they are groomed and same thing happened elison she said ah, i think this is okay it's my choice then jane asked her okay what about if your younger sister has to go through all this she was immediately angered she understand like so rather than directly calling her that you are groomed she put that perspective for her younger sister and then she could understand what i want to say here is most of the victims they don't realize what is happening with them that's the uh, the bad part of this so uh, so grooming the more um, we covered this so grooming uh, who are they who are these people so the study is so far like if we look at the conviction rates so up to 2015 there were around 177 men were con- convicted of these crimes so it's it's uh, you know i'll say up to 2009 there were hardly 30 convictions because authorities were not even ready to acknowledge this this thing and then after 2012 it came into 
public domain and then convictions begin so last 5 years so i am talking about 2010 to 15 another 140 convictions happened and after one, uh, 2015 the rate of conviction has further increased more than more cases are coming up more than more victims are opening up 20 30 years old cases are coming up so the 90% of the perpetrators are from muslim background more than 90% and out of that 90% more than 80% are pakistani so this is the thing which that community should also cons- introspect and others should also know i'll go to this de- uh, this point in more details later but these are like normal people who are taxi drivers take away owners and workers shop owners security guards around complexes drug dealers and pimps they are the men with families and kids of their own having same age as the girls they are abusing most of these men in late 30s early 40s or even in 50s their own daughters are elder than the girl they are abusing they have no morality no shame no remorse how did grooming begin like when did it begin so the earliest cases were from late 80s so initially the grooming was targeted against um sikh girls hindu girls indian girls and as a result sikhs created a vigilante groups in a civilized society in a democracy we don't want people to take law in their hand initially these people six they try to collect the details and share with the agencies law agencies but they were like just ignored and then finally they created their groups so shere punjab there was a group they created and there is another group they created sikh awareness society and it is doing a tremendous job in building awareness about this phenomena i have met a mohan singh ji who works for, uh, as a coordinator and he 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 toured around britain lecture meet girls meet victims try to bring them out of this so six so initial targets were six and hindu girls and it goes way back in 1980s late 80s in 2013 uh, 40 sikh men attacked a pakistani owned restaurant mughal darbar in leicester uh, they were observing the uh, their one of their sister going to that restaurant and they had a doubt that she was abused so they tracked her very closely and when they saw one day she was taken on a flat above that restaurant this 40 man one of them her brother they attacked the restaurant it came in the news lot of things happened initially police were very heavily dealt with six men how how can you attack and finally when this uh, uh, this went to the court and it was identified that a guy working there was involved in the abuse of girls so this is like started by 30 years back and when we talk about number of victims so in 2014 association of chief police officer acpo stated that every year around 10000s of girls are a victim at a given point of time 10000 in the clutches of grooming gangs there was a small county of rodaram when this grooming the first time the watershed moment in this uh, grooming phenomena and do not for when he brought out this uh, the times editor he brought out this news in the public domain and then after that inquiries were set up two two inquiries were set up for a small town uh, of england which is rodaram and the first inquiry said that minimum 1400 children were abused in last 15 20 years and then there was second inquiry set up which said that it is as much as 2000 or even more 
So small town with a Muslim population, 3%, small town of 250,000 people, 2,50,000 people, and 2,000 victims, almost 1%. And these girls were between 10 to 20 years of time, they were groomed. If we extrapolate it to, to whole Britain, the numbers are mind-boggling. It, it is as close to 1 lakh to 1 million victims in last 20, 30 years. It's not a small number. One small town, 2,000 victims. The government-sponsored inquiry has identified. Many have not come up after this uh, uh, scandal came into you know, public domain and there were some groups to, for the assistance of the victims. Many have come up, come forward, but many have not. So these numbers are low estimates, low probability. So, so it is like roughly one lakh to one million. And even if we take a lower end of it, one lakh victims of grooming, one lakh childs were abused, their life were destroyed. So um, in, in just 2013, there were 54 ongoing investigations in, across country. So this, this gives us a magnitude of the, the impact it has created. The 28 towns where convictions have happened. This is a list of towns. Birmingham, Blackburn, Blackpool, Bradford. Bristol, Sheffield, many of these are Muslim, heavily Muslim populated towns, 28 towns. So when Cassie report came out, she said that if you are thinking you haven't got a problem in your city or town, probably you are just not looking for it. This is as simple as that. And after this, the many, many more towns have come up, the Oxford, it's Peterborough, Preston. Now recently in Preston, this is I'm talking about 2021, 22 as we speak now. So last year, there were many kids after this corona restrictions were lifted, have taken admission in the medical colleges. That I'm talking about girls who are like in around their uh, you know, adulthood, 18, 18 years of age, when they are going for uh, this medical courses, they were groomed. This is a recent two, three months before the, this, this was identified. So this is my appeal to the Indian parents when they are sending their kids to UK for studies, thinking that a bright future awaits them. See the demograph demography of that town. See the full perspective what all can go wrong. Talk to your kids. The modus operandi was a little different in this recent cases where they were more than to put into drugs and then the sexual exploitation. So drugs was a prominent factor. So it's a little you know, different from what I wanted to cover today. But it's important for us to know that this has not stopped. It is still continuing. And everyone is a target for this. When 18 years old girls going for medical degrees can fall victim, we can imagine how shrewd, how well planned these groomers are. Most of them from Pakistani heritage. Again, in the recent cases too, same thing. This is a map where you know it was shown that where convictions have happened. Um, so this is now the business angle of it. We must understand this part also. So there was a uh, there was a journalist who went and uh, talked with uh, some of the people who were convicted and their friends, and uh, try to understand like what's the business aspect of it. And there were many other researches have happened after you know. Uh, uh, taking no, notes of like what victims have to, uh, these perpetrators have to say. So about their business, uh, they earn in the prime age of that girl up to 200 pounds per girl per encounter. And this is like 
as soon as girl finishes one customer she is asked to go with another customer it's like a conveyor belt so ruthlessly they are sexually exploited it's not only their body their soul is murdered they they stopped identifying themselves as a human being they stopped acknowledging that there is something wrong happening with them and in one night four to five six eight up to eight encounters happening which is fetching them a thousand pound and a girl once trapped is in their control for five to ten years until late twenties they are in control of this groomers so starting from 11 12 13 years until 28 29 years complete i mean so they earn like 300k so huge money per per girl per year so and and the thing is girls are not usually paid directly this is where it is different from prostitution where okay that is also not something you know good but where there is a customer there is a direct deal and there is a money paid here it is a sex slavery girls are paid nothing probably a packet of chips there are many cases where a packet of chips a cigarette a pizza slice of pizza that's how they were paid no money nothing so it's more of a sex slavery this young girls go through so the rough estimate is like this business is 500 million pound per year this is a very lucrative business these boys have nothing good to do in their life they are not employable they are targeting young girls they send their their op- how it works is they send their younger siblings their nephews to trap them then the older man will come into picture and the full exploitation will begin from there the young boy will will be paid some money and he will be out of that circle he will be used for trapping a next girl and this happened when girls are traveling from their school to home the most of the uh, girls are trapped in that uh, travel when they are away from school when they are away from their parents they look around shopping arcades and and trap these girls if we look at the legal angle the the age of consent in england is 16 years so a whole grooming is like from 11 to 16 years so none of a girl can say that i am a consenting uh, partner no you are not no matter how much you are drugged how much you are conditioned you are not consenting partner because you are not even reached to that age for prostitution it is 18 years but for non prostitution physical relations 16 years and below that whole responsibility lies with the adult there is no concept of consensual sex below these age limits so so we have so far understood like try to understand that um, what is grooming who are doing that what is the scope of it what is the business how the modus operandi and so on uh the next we'll understand as i said that this is the biggest child protection scandal that has happened in last 100 years in england so when i say scandal there must be something failed something which has not worked whether intentionally or unintentionally so what has failed these girls so we'll talk about those things first i'll say schools and when i say schools because schools are loco parentis which means they are as good as parents when girls children are away from their parents when they are away from their home teachers are their parents when a girl is playing trance absent from school for 5 days when she is coming back in a very shabby condition a physical appearance her language her appearance is very compromised are they not responsible to ask 
what has happened so parents if they are not asking a girl away for 5 days are not fit for parenthood and similarly teachers who don't ask question to these girls where were you don't inform their parents don't inform police that girl is absconding from 5 days not attending to they just turn a blind eye most of these people knew who are outside their school gates these were pakistani muslim grooming gangs as simple as that and they were in outside their schools all the time it was duty of these uh, these school teachers to report them but they haven't they ignored absence and physical state on return in fact uh there was a movie made there was a educational movie my dangerous lover boy it was made on government funding to educate uh, young girls about grooming about sexual exploitation harms of it so this simple 20 minutes movie now these um school unions there's a there's a national union of teacher nut they are actual nuts so the abbreviation is nut so uh they are the major sponsors of united against fascism there's another uh you know so called organization which opposes fascism so the teachers associations are the major sponsors and they actively participated to block any publicity about grooming phenomena and role played by the community so and and that's that's how they stopped this my dangerous lover boy only in sheffield one town few schools have shown this movie no other town in england have shown this movie who are the sponsors these? these are teachers unfit to be loco parentis they have failed their child like students next we go to um local councils who preferred see no evil so if you close your eyes there is nothing happening they were very slow to realize the wide space prospered organized sexual abuse of children taking place in their towns in their local parks local parking places at on their door stops steps but they they did not take any notice in action lack of willingness to address the problem and then the bigger crime that it is the concealed who are the perpetrators the difference in ethnicity so so this ethnicity no one was allowed to speak about it who are the victims and who are the perpetrators if we look at that 90% of the perpetrators from one community i will show the names of all 177 convicts in the end of this slide deck you yourself anyone can see that so who are the predators and who are these victims initial few years six and hindu girls and last 20 years mostly british white girls children the case of laura wilson i have mentioned here so laura wilson was 16 years of age she was um, she fall uh, fall in love that love with a again a pakistani man and she became pregnant so 16 years of age she was pregnant and she was behind that man that you promised to marry me i slept with hundreds of men because you told me now i'm pregnant i have no relation left with my family you marry me or else i'll come your come to your home and tell your parents what that guy did in her pregnancy 
he stabbed her hundreds of times and threw her in the canal. Her body was found after a few days and the postpartum report says that she was alive when she touches the water. She touched the water. Her wounds were heavily bleeding. Her pregnancy was terminated and this girl died out of drowning and injuries. The most cruel way they ended her life. So, but in this case also, they did not let the, the ethnicity, ethnicity factor come out. Who were those people? Hide their identity. Why? For what? Why are you sacrificing these girls? But unfortunately, that has happened. So, next is I'll go to police. So, they are the you know, first point of contact. Parents, first time they see their girls not returning home, who will they go to? They go to police. And they completely turn, again, same response, blind eye to grooming. They were scared of riots. You can correlate with many things happening in our current world, happening yesterday, today. We are afraid of riots. So in 2001, in uh, Bedford, the Pakistani people, they rioted some goons in, from their community. And police was very scared of them. And for that fear, they don't want to touch that community. So what? Thousands of girls are sacrificed? That's fine. This is their gratefulness towards the host country. Then the criminal justice system, the crown protection system, like where the judges sit and decide the punishment for the criminals. Most of the victim, victims found this court process worse than the actual exploitations. And there's a, there's a reluctance to punish these rapists. If they were acting fast, they could have saved thousands and thousands of vulnerable girls going through this misery. The police was also demoralized because of judiciary. Because if judiciary is slow, is reluctant to punish, and police collect all the evidences. And in the end, what happens? It goes, the perpetrators go scot-free. So it is a demoralizing thing for the police and other agencies. So that's why this law in the judiciary should be very strong and should be very prompt in attending these cases, the sensitivity of this. I'll give one example here. This girl, Samantha, she was 15 years of age. In 2006, this happened. She was heavily drugged by her abusers. And she was abducted by two Pakistani Muslim men in Oldham area. She was raped for hours in the moving car and then thrown out. The step sped down the car, opened the gate and thrown her out on the street. She was so traumatized, she went to the nearby house and asked for help. That man, again that community area, so the, the house was also owned by a community member. Instead of helping that girl, the child, 15-year child, he dragged her upstairs and again sexually assaulted her. And then when she was, he was calling other friends, I have got a trap, come, we'll enjoy. That time she managed to run away. When she was running outside the house, she met with a taxi driver. There was a taxi passing by. There were passengers. They pulled up and said, okay, we'll take you to the police. And this stupid girl, she believed them. She sat in the taxi. They took her to the house on a talk close and five men raped her over and over for nearly 24 hours. So on the same day, this girl was raped by three different set of people, three different gangs. 
only one person got convicted the last the taxi driver company the ring leader shakil chaudhary and what was the conviction 3 years that's it a 15 years old girl getting raped so many times on a single day but the conviction is 3 years and the reason why judge said she was heavily drugged so she was under the influence of alcohol a child was under the influence of alcohol and this ring leader shakil am chaudhary he refused to name his other partners in crime he refused but just said that as he has not used violence i don't know what violence what other violence he was hoping for so just three years of sentence and he was let go then all other agencies where we go to this you know government fund these agencies from the taxpayers money child exploitation and online protection center serious organized crime agencies children commission commissioner home affairs select committee charities like barnardos everyone academic experts everyone failed these girls they failed to perform their duties and in the end i will say muslim community they have to introspect it's not against the community i'm not saying all the muslim men are like this most of the muslim men are not involved in grooming gangs but this is also true that those who are involved among them predominantly are from this community so they have to see there is not a single case of grooming where the girl is muslim and the predator is non muslim not a single conviction so they must introspect so these are some of the how these predators look like all so see the names there was uh, this photo i put on purpose this there was the one sadar uh, caught in uh, in this uh, conviction others field and there were rumors about this that you know what he converted to islam and uh, that's why he did that and all that however the sikh community came forward and said no he was a practicing sikh he has not converted and give him as much as punishment as possible under the law they were very unlike the other community who hide their their criminals who side with their criminals the response of sikh community was very different because sikhs and hindus and other communities they respect local laws they feel the gratefulness towards the host country but there is a community who has no sense of gratefulness so they always protect their criminals these are various you know uh, convicts uh, is taken from newspaper cuttings and all some of the research papers that have come out so this is the list i was talking about if we look at these see the names wherever these are non muslims it, it has um, it has uh, been bolded and there are some names which i have bolded uh, put the different marks so most you can see mohammad rashid abid sadiq shabir ahmed munawar khan it is enough to prove if somebody don't want to acknowledge so this is the town this is the first name last name age of the perpetrator you can very well see the ages well in 30s well in 20s so this is a complete list of all 177 uh, convicts in um, up to 2015 and there's a new list we can publish another 300 added so so this thing i have told like based on the convictions until 2015 more than 90% are from muslim community less than 10% are from non muslims and what is the population of muslims in britain 
4 to 5 percent. What does it mean? Likelihood of an individual Muslim to commit this offense is 1800 as compared to non Muslims. So it is 170 times more. And if if community does not want to introspect, does not want to stop this, they, they must see how, how it will go. Another thing, uh, political correctness. So, uh, they, they, why why this uh, you know this country could not do anything about these predators, these criminals for over two to three decades? It's only after 2012-13 these cases have come in the public domain and then convictions have started. What were they doing from 1990s to 2012 for 22, 23 years? So there were three main reasons of these failures. The political correctness, the theory of political correctness, multiculturalism, and the fear of racism. These three factors have stopped all the agencies, including police, to act. So political correctness is a, if I define this, it is a sinister device constructed by left to ensure that negative outcome of left-wing ideologies are never subjected to criticism. So in simple words, I can, we can say that in the name of sensitivity, they obstruct the truth. They will call you racist, they will call you misogynist, sexist, what not. So these are otherwise the left liberals, they say we are the proponents of free speech, but they don't let anyone speak truth freely. This is what political correctness is. So in, uh, in 2005, when there was Labour, uh, the two parties in UK, Conservative and Labour, there are many, but they mainly, these are two, like, we have two major parties. So this Labour Party, when they were in the ruling, they brought this racial and religious hatred bill. Clearly it says anything which Muslims found insulting will be a criminal offence, a prison imprisonment up to seven years. Now if this kind of government is there, why a police officer, or why a charity worker, or why a any agency will speak up because they always have a fear that somebody will call us racist and we will we can be imprisoned they they try to pass this bill three times and house of lords all the time it rejected it raised concern that what you are saying will change the future of our country so there are three things that were put under the category of criminal offense threatening abusive and insulting. So they said you have to remove last two things. Abusive and insulting is subjected to interpretation. And for that, you can't put people in jail. So finally, this bill was passed after removing those two clauses. So now Muslim find something insulting, nobody will be imprisoned. But that was the intent of then government ruling government, and this is the political correctness. It gave virtual impunity to the grooming gangs. A climate of fear was created. Nobody can speak a word about them. If you dare speak truth, you will be prosecuted. And then the abuse of narrative of racism. This is a second culprit. When this, up to 2009, a British Council of um, Muslims. Their response was, it is a racist myth, the grooming. Whenever somebody approached them, it's a racist myth. They don't even acknowledge, acknowledge that this is something happening by their con uh, community. So, and this, uh, uh, even till today, if you see any grooming related news article, any conviction, Always it is said Asian. So the term, comfortable term was invented, Asian. Asia has 48 countries. How many people from India 
or China or Japan have been convicted for grooming offenses? Zero. Possibly, probably zero. So why, when Pakistani Muslims are doing this crime and they are called Asians, it's a very good scape route provided so that they are not offended. What should have happened? Whoever is committing crime should be punished. But that has not happened because of the fear of racism. And then this thing was totally ignored, the cultural values. So multiculturalism, basically, it, it is again a tool which when there is a conflict between the two cultures, it says that you should not speak about conflict. Everyone is same, whereas no one is same. So, so demand for Sharia law. law. So 40% of UK Muslims want Sharia law in their country, in their host country. Why have you come to UK? You could have stayed in your your native countries. This is a democracy. Why you want to replace it with Sharia law? One third of UK Muslims agree that anybody who leaves Islam should be killed. One third. The FGM, female genital mutilation, it was banned in UK in 1985. At the moment, there are 100,000 girls who have gone through this in UK. 100,000 girls. So this is the respect of lo local law. When there was an appeal made to uh, imams that in your mosque, can you condemn grooming phenomena so that you stop your youth from taking in, going into these kind of horrible crimes? What did they do? Very few, very handful of mosques did that. Most of them preferred not to do that. Why? If you are not up for reformation, how will you stop your boys doing these kind of things? But unfortunately, that... Okay, so this is a case study of Sammy Woodhouse. Why I brought this is this girl has played a pivotal role in helping Andrew Normack, uh, sorry, I, I'll just uh, check the name again. Uh, yeah, so this guy, Andrew Norfolk, he was the chief reporter in the Times. And this guy brought out the story in 2013. And after that, things have changed. So this, she was a whistleblower. She has gone through the very bad abuse. This was her photos from childhood. And this is when she, uh, if you see the right hand side, uh, she, when she entered into the secondary school and the, the age when her abuse started, happy family, everything was good. But then she was, um, there was a Pakistani, three brothers and one of them, uh, a sheikh uh, in the Rodram County. She was, uh, again, same grooming thing. She was, uh, he, he came as a boyfriend, fleshy cars, superb music system in the car, take away, like taking her out. And she was very happy for the initial period. And then slowly this turned into an abusive relationship, sexual exploitation. And then in the, at the age of 15 years, it, left hand side you can see she was pregnant. Her relationship with her loving father was totally destroyed. This man was like, he tried two years to save his daughters. He, tr he tried to follow her, give all the information to police agencies. Nobody heard. Because the girl, she was too much into influence of her groomer. And after like, you know, delivering this baby, and when she saw that this man is trying to convert this boy into Islam, 
influencing him. That time she had this recognition that something has gone wrong in my life. And that is the cruel part of this grooming phenomena. That victims don't realize what is happening with them. So then finally she she met with this guy, Andrew, and they came with a detailed study and it went to the public domain and this Ashad Hussain, he, he was the ring leader with his three brothers. He was jailed for 35 years and other two brothers for 20 and 18 years. So, so she has a very big role to play. Uh, she even was invited by David Cameron, uh, Prime Minister of UK, to meet in 2015. And she has put up a case of Sammy's Law. Uh, basically, this girl is trying to, uh, of course, build awareness about this coming phenomena, but also uh, this Sammy's Law, she wants to, you know, get it passed so that any girl, any child who has been groomed and under the influence of her groomer, if she has committed any offenses like shoplifting or some small burglaries or some drugs trafficking, those things, she should, she, that girl should not be punished, punished for those offenses. As per the current law, they are also liable for punishment. Even in her case, when all the accounts were listed, her jail term, her prison term was coming 102 years. When David Cameron heard this, he fall off from his chair laughing, oh my God, 102 years of jail term, 35 years for the abuser and 102 years for the, um, for the victim. And she has done all those uh, you know, crimes under the influence of drugs and the abuser. So she's coming with a, you know appeal that we must change these laws. They should be in favor of uh, victims rather than the abusers. So th this is a, a slide where, you know, what are the ways we can save our daughters falling victims? So they, they, there are many victims who have come up with, like uh, they have emphasized that there should be a mandatory training in home and schools. So in UK, the schools, year six, they were given, uh, they are given training about the, uh, which they call sexual education. But in that, the healthy relationship, abuse, exploitation, this, these things are never touched. So they want, like, these things should be included on in those training so that kids understand what is the meaning of healthy relationship when somebody is exploiting me and when not. Distinction should be clear in mind. There should be a system to support victims, not victim shaming. When they go to the court, they will ask very uncomfortable questions. And that makes them feel like not going to court. And then the society, which has shown a great degree of indifference. It's happening with someone else's daughter, not my daughter. So how should I care? I'm happy with watching football and going to the pubs. So what? 100,000 girls were exploited. My daughter was not part of that. So as a society, we have to stand for each, stand with each other and come with truth before any fear. That is most important. The community angle that I said, that community has to retrospect. So there is a, a journalist who reached out to the father of one boy who was convicted in Goon Gooming Gang. The reaction of uh, that father. So he, he tried to look very composed, not ready to agree that it is his son's fault. What his point is, whole system is wrong. These girls are wrong. The, 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 you know, go, everything around my boys are wrong. Yes, my boys have did some faults. Boys, eh? but everything else is, is the bigger fault. That is the response, basically. Uh, I, I talked about this Jane Prince. Her, her, she has given the good, you know, she has worked with hundreds of girls while she was doing a risky business project. And one of the girls, Paula, 
she, I, I'm just trying to give a perspective. This Paula was 14 years of age, hanging with Muslim taxi driver. She was uh, taunting, missing schools. Parents were very worried. The the guy who was abusing was Daud. The name was Daud, and uh, he abused her for years, and then. Later, he convinced her that you have to mend your ways. You know what? I've sent you to 100 men in the last two, three years, but you have to now go through the purity process. So you must start covering your hair and face. No smoking, no drinking. Sex with my friends is okay, but you have to become a good abiding Muslim. What they did is they took her to a mosque and stripped her. Twelve men, including one imam, bathed her for the sake of purity. She was, she currently, she is a devout Muslim. She wears burqa, hijab, probably third, pregnant with a third child. When Jen met her in 2000, 15, she was shocked. She tried to save this girl. When a community says, like, you are pointing fingers at us, how can you take a girl to a mosque and bathe her with 12 men? Anal sex is, is okay, but not uh, covering face. And this guy was later on punished for that offense. But this is, this is the community response. This same journalist, I'll say, she is from community. It's not like everyone is silent. There are two, three guys. There's a Mohammed Shakin. He has come up and he he was the first person from the community to come forward and say that we have to mend our ways. He immediately received that threat. That was the response. So this uh, journalist met some of the abusers and tried to reason with them. Why? Why 11 year, 12 year old child? What money you get? Why you do that? We feel ashamed to say all these things, but that's how they see the girls. Like uh, when I was talking about police and criminal justice system, so again, this Jane, that this is the last one. So Jessica, another girl, uh, she handled the case. She was 14 years of uh, girl. 14 years of age, and uh, there was abuser was 25 years old Pakistani man. man. Her, her family, sometimes what happens when the family see that they can't save their daughters, they send them to the foster care or care homes. They, they do it to save her siblings, younger siblings from the clutches of grooming gangs. It's so traumatic for the parents that they have, they realize this is my country, my city, my town. I can't save my daughter because of someone grooming her and no authority is coming to my help. So what I will do is I'll abandon this girl. I'll let her go to the care home, live there, maybe different town. She'll be out of the control, but it never happened, never worked. They, they many a times they said that you know the victims were from the uh, from the uh, broken families or from care homes. The statistics does not suggest that there were girls from care homes from the broken families, but there were girls from normal families. This girl Jessica, when her father parents could not control the grooming, they sent to the, her to the foster care. And this 25-year-old man, he uh, convinced her to run away from foster care. And the father came to know about that. He searched. He knew the, 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 the places where these abusers live. So one day, in search of her, his daughter, he reached to their, uh, their flat. And he started knocking. He said that, I know my daughter is inside. Open the door. They did not open. In that rage, 
in that anger, he, he started abusing. I'll say it's the most gentle reaction when your daughter is inside with a much older man and somebody is trying to abuse. So, so he used some swear words and the, the neighbors, what they did is they, they called police. This is the community support. And police came. They forced their way into the flat. They, they opened the door. And what they found, this girl was heavily drugged, semi-naked. A boy was pulling up his, his pants. And there were 12, 13 men inside that room with that young 14 years old girl. And what did police do? Police arrested the father and the girl. They arrested father on the charge of racism. And they arrested girl for the charge of drug use and abusive behavior. They did not caught a single man out of those 13 men. This is the adherence to their duty. How can someone do that? It's like, it's difficult to even hear these stories. What would have parents, what agony their parents have suffered? And that is where disappointment with, with UK as a general public, that they could not do anything. Like they are so addicted to football and <laughs> this uh, pubs culture and all that. This is happening. They, they, can they imagine if 100 Muslim girls were abused in this fashion, what would have happened? No. But one after the another, thousands of such stories. I have in my background some books, all these books. Now the victims are coming up, coming forward, writing books, encouraging others to come up. Because these perpetrators deserve big punishment. Many of them have fled to their home country. 30 years is a big time. Somebody committed a crime at the 25 years of age and now he's at 50 years of age, still roaming free. What justice system is this? And that also to prove that conviction is so difficult, horribly difficult, and some of them have fled already. So that's, that's the uh, sad part of this. So I'll stop now for the questions. Uh, Namaste, Mahjid. Uh, thank Namaste. you for this talk. Very disturbing. Very, very disturbing, especially for women. I think uh, that goes without saying that. Uh, this, uh, these are things we know about, especially I think the article that you mentioned, which came in, I think, seven or eight years ago, or five or six years ago. That particular article is the one through which we all got to know that this is happening and um, this is uh, a big, big problem, which is being kept uh, under wraps. My question is actually um, grooming. This word grooming gang. See, even when I read this whole series of articles, I didn't just read one. At that time, I remember I looked up and read as many as I could, and it was very shocking and horrific, um, the statistics. Who coined the word grooming? How did that word come up? Because it's a very soft word. And I'm a words person. So for me, if a word like grooming is used, no one's going to take that crime seriously. Yeah, to be honest, when first time I heard, I thought somebody's talking about dog grooming. <laughs> So, and I couldn't find the answer yet that why this soft term grooming has been used. It's like, a, I, I would better call it a sex slavery, uh, nothing else. And sex slavery of a child. These are pedophiles. So, I also read about these series of articles uh, which came out in 2013, which you referred. Um, and that is how I also got to know. And uh, so, that's the background very quickly. Uh, my question is, um, what is it which makes all these girls so vulnerable to all these men, especially men who are pretty uh, old as compared to the victim's age? That's one. Second, why the same thing is not happening with the, the Muslim girls? Hmm. So the first question you asked, like why these girls are so vulnerable. So, 
see if you look at the europe culture this is a open society there is quite a lot of freedom uh, given to the kids when they enter into secondary school they are not mature but they have a lot of freedom and then at that age the flattery works someone coming speaking comforting words you are average looking but you are shown as if you are like you know something special so that feeling it's way and then somebody taking you out in a most uh, substantial cars you know gifting you the, these people have lot of patience the abuse never starts immediately it takes months 3 to 6 months time until then you can still save a girl they they are not sexually exploited they are not abused physically no violence until then so patiently that's why it's a very well organized gang it's not like some novice coming into this they know how to condition child's thinking thought process and that's what they take advantage and the very first thing they do is they disconnect that child from her parents once they achieve that goal everything is clear for them so this this is how it is like why they are so vulnerable and second part why muslim girls so they, that is a very close community they are still wearing like you know uh, fully covered dresses i mean uh, there's nothing against what what one wears or not but they are still a very conservative society everywhere they live in ghettos they are very tightly controlled all these abusers who are in their late 30s are married they have girls they have their wives they have their children and even these people are the party to it they are not directly involved maybe but they never come out and report this behavior to the police this is such a shame so like i gave an example of fgm see what's the respect of law one lakh uk girls muslim girls are still under that so you can see the freedom they enjoy or lack of it considering you said whatever you just said um and and i was guessing that um and the other things which you talked in your presentation I mean, does it come across as a surprise that the community just negates the whole thing and doesn't want to do anything? That's one. Second is somehow I believe that we are we are looking at a community with a lens which that community doesn't believe in. It's it's very difficult to answer what is going on. But see, what we will go with what has been proven so far. what have been what the convictions have come and we'll talk on the patterns otherwise you and me will also be called islamophobes in this talk i have not talked a single thing which is not proven not written not came out of the court i i in in the initial when i begin this talk and in initial 7 minutes i talked about a girl charlin downs she was sold as a kebab after murdering her mm-hmm. so her mother has gone through the uh, a process court process for years and uh, agonized and then after she was informed that you know what you are entitled for criminal criminal sorry criminal justice system compensation she was very unwilling i want my daughter i don't mind want this bloody money but fine she said probably for my other daughters it will come handy so she she agreed for that what was she paid 5500 pounds she and her husband again 5500 pounds and these two men who killed her not proven guilty when they applied for this they were paid 250000 pounds each that's the justice system as if we rule by by maniacs who are these people a mother getting 
and the the predator the criminal he's getting 250000 pounds in a damage control and that has happened how difficult it was the mother has said in her book i could not believe which country i am living in is this my country my daughter was eaten alive by these guys and now they will be rich people both of them together got half a million pound for committing this crime this is the price they got that's how the system is it's difficult to even just recollect our thoughts that <laughs> i know this i in the beginning that's why i said it will pain us when we hear about this. there are many many stories i have i have not talked uh, tanya ji there i have full account of uh, such a horrible mess uh, which is difficult to even uh, narrate the kind of abuse these girls have gone through her 13 years old child has been forced to stand on streets has been sent from one town to another and another to another in one night eight ten places she's highly abbreviated like she she has no control of her emotions she is highly drugged she is not a human being she is a piece of meat for them these criminals that's all that's how they treat them anyway we, it's very yeah saddening i i agree with you let me we say the grooming gangs i don't think they are grooming the girls it's their family is grooming them to do this to the girls the better be groomed to do this to the girls and abhi to the men are becoming younger and younger in age and so are the girls who are being kidnapped and as far as being asked that uh, why are they doing this and why is the community quiet uh, there are two more things remember i don't know if anybody has seen that picture there's a i think there's a relief in one of the museums where the brahmins of india are sitting at the feet of sir william jones and the caption says sir william jones gave law to indians to the hindus these are the laws and they are coming up in our country too this is happening in our country also and of course for the question that the other gentleman brought up how do the girls fall and why is nobody doing anything why are the muslims quiet muslim women in their homes are being treated the same that is a part of their religion and everybody and everybody must read two books one is muhammad a paper versus muhammad and the other one is life of muhammad understanding muhammad the life of muhammad by ali sina and you will know everything we don't do that we don't try to do jisko hum log hindi mein bolte the purv par aur english mein bolte hain due diligence we don't want to know we just want to listen to them and we are in denial ourselves the political correctness jahan tak baat hai the british is are very politically correct when it comes to talking about muslims but where does their political correctness go you everybody knows i think rashmi savant case from oxford okay. university so jahan tak you know this is a very cynical remark they are zone of me and whatever you can say curse me out on this but the british brought this on themselves this is the frankenstein they built to destroy the hindus and they are suffering now that's true even their uh, their own prime minister of old days churchill he said once if you ch- between uh, dishonor and war if you choose dishonor war will definitely follow you can't avoid like, this much dishonor of the daughters and on the home ground you are able to do nothing nothing to save them 30 years is not a short period generation one generation pass says in that time 